Thanks a lot for coming today. My name is Rote. I'm from Tel Aviv, Israel. In the past three years, I've been the CTO, co-founder of a company called Ariga. As part of my job, I have the awesome privilege and, and uh, responsibility to be a maintainer of two fairly large open source projects. The first is called Ant. Ant is an entity framework for Go. This is my Go mascot. I take it to every conference. And until recently, he has always protected me from the demo gods. <laughs> so I hope the bad luck is out, because I insist on doing a live demo in every uh, talk. It's, you know, living on the edge. So. The second project that I'm uh, maintaining in, in open source is called Atlas. Atlas lets you manage your database schema as code. It's a tool that's designed to help organizations better manage change with their database. And this is going to be a central uh, part of our discussion today. But before we dive into technical uh, discussion about DevOps and change management and platforms and all of that stuff. I want to tell you a story. It's not a regular story, it is a horror story. And if you watch the TV show Fargo, then you know it's based on a true story. It happened to someone I know in 2021, I will not say the name, but except for the names that were changed, everything is told exactly as it occurred. So it was a sunny day in Tel Aviv. The product manager approached our nice developer and asked them for a simple request. Can they please add a new status to the user entity? No problem, thought our developer. I am a professional. So this guy was working in Node.js with an ORM called SQLize. You can see the model definition, and you see the git diff. This status field is of an enum type, meaning it can hold a limited set of options. And he was adding the invited option. Now, changing code is nice, but when we are dealing with the database, we also need to make changes to the database. These changes are typically called migrations for historical reasons. They're migrating the database from one version to the next. We could have called them upgrades or schema changes, but in our industry, they are commonly called migrations. So this is the script that our developer planned to update his database from the previous version to the next. We already mentioned we're dealing with a pro. So this guy did everything by the book. He opened the pull request, CI, all the tests were green, all of the automation passed, the tech lead gave the thumbs up, and everything was ready to go to production. This is the most exciting part of being a developer, right? The time that your hard work is ready to be shipped. And then? <laughs> Anybody want to guess what's going to happen next? So this is the sound. The horrifying sound of a full-blown outage. The database CPU shot to the roof. 100% error rate on all of the critical endpoints. And of course, 100% dissatisfaction from the CTO who is breathing at our developer's neck. What's going on with this incident? Does anybody know why this happened? A mystery. This talk, you can think about it like a postmortem about why this thing happened. So 
the technical reason, the simple reason, the superficial reason for this failure is that our dev was using MySQL. And in MySQL, if you change an enum column type, if you add the new option at the end of the list, everything goes fine. But because of the internal implementation details of MySQL, if you add the new value at the beginning of the list, the database must rewrite the whole table on disk. To do this, it must lock the table for writes in order to satisfy all of the atomicity, consistency, et cetera, uh, guarantees. So while the database is rewriting this table, it is locked for writes. If this is a small table, you will not notice. It might be done in a few milliseconds. But our users table had lots of records. The database was pretty busy. The disk case, this space was, you know, uh, not abundant. And so this was a very slow operation. And in this time, by the way, even if you have a rollback mechanism, there's nothing you can do about it. The database has to run and finish this operation. So end of talk, add enum values at the end. But you know that postmortems are not about, are really about understanding the root cause of something. And to do that, the common technique is to ask why five times. So let's try to understand this incident. Why did we have downtime? Because the migration table, the migration locked the table. Why did it lock the table? Because our developer shipped broken code. Why did they break, ship broken code? It wasn't caught during CI. Why wasn't it caught during CI? Because we rely on humans to review and catch this type of issue. But why do we rely on humans to verify database schema changes? Well, part of my job is to find out because I'm building a product and a company that's in the automation of this kind of operation. So I was really curious, what is the situation in the industry with regard to this uh, problem? And I asked many platform engineers, infra engineers, people that are responsible for building the tools that developers use to develop every day. And the common response was, I don't know. Migrations are an updev problem. So people think that because migrations are part of the application development process, the tools that we have to apply them, they come with the ORM. You know, Django has its migration thing. Most frameworks have some primitive tool to, to deal with this. So this is an application problem. But I want to try to make the argument today that perhaps we should not be thinking about it this way. Migrations are a riskier business, and we showed one example, but let's show a few more. Destructive changes. When you make changes to the database, you can accidentally delete data. Aside from losing your precious data, this means that you will have an outage in production because if your backend expects some column to exist there, queries are going to start to fail. It might sound to you like, huh, Who's ever going to delete data on accident? But just recently, a poor guys at Recent, really cool email company, they published this uh, postmortem. So 5 a.m., database, database migration started. A minute later, notice tables being dropped from the production database. It was not a happy day for them. Long story short, it took many hours Recovering from a snapshot didn't work. They did a bunch of other things. It's an interesting postmortem. You should read it. But the point is that this happens in real companies. Constraint violations. Sometimes you plan changes to the database, and they work on your dev machine. They work in staging, but then all of a sudden, they fail in production. For example, if you add a unique index to a column, it really depends on the data. If there are duplicate values, you're going to get a constraint violation, and you're going to get a migration that failed halfway. Migration that failed halfway means a deployment that failed halfway. And nobody likes to go and start to 
look into the system to try to exactly what happened and to try to sort things out. This is something you're probably going to need to sort out manually by manually connecting to the database. So maybe there should be a way to prevent this from happening. Breaking changes. Data contracts are super important. Everybody's talking today about data contracts between production teams and data engineering teams, but there is also a contract between your backend and your database. If you rename a column and you don't do it the right way, you're going to start getting failed queries because if your backend expects some column to exist but it was renamed, it's not going to work. And as we've shown, there are multiple scenarios where this happened. But if your database is now busy applying a migration that is a long-running operation and the table is locked for writes, your queries are going to start to pile up. You get timeout, you get dbcpu to the roof, and you have an outage like we've shown before. So to platform developers and DevOps people and SREs that are not concerned with migrations, I want to say that you should because they have a very strong impact on the metrics that we are measured by. Okay? Scott mentioned earlier today that it's problematic in practice to measure these metrics, and he sees a lot more companies than I do, so uh, I'm going to trust his word. But I think the spirit behind these metrics is what matters. How do we know if our platform is effective? So our company measures us by saying, leave time for changes. How much time does it take to get something from code to production? Deployment frequency, how often do we want to be one of these companies that ships 100 times a day? We don't want to be this company that takes you know, a week to prepare a release or releases once a quarter. Change failure rate, we really don't like to deal with a failed deployment. And MTTR, mean time to recover, when an outage happens, we want to be able to roll back quickly, cut our losses, and move forward. So how do you think database schema changes overall as this thing that we need to deal with impacts these metrics? Surprise, not in a positive way. So lead time. We have shown that database schema changes are dangerous, and so they require attention from human experts. I have talked to numerous companies this month and asked them how they authorize, how they approve schema migrations. And in these companies that are making lots of money and have real customers, the solution that they come, came up with was to create a database guild or a schema approval board. Basically, every change to the database now needs to be signed off by the most senior engineering leadership, which creates a bottleneck, increasing lead time. We cannot be agile, we cannot move fast if we need experts to approve each and every change to a database schema. Deployment frequency. What happens when we are afraid? We do less. We don't deploy 200 schema changes a day. Oh God, no, maybe couple a quarter, right? We're going to batch these changes. We're going to avoid these changes. We're going to find every way in the world to avoid making these changes. And so we reduce our deployment frequency. Change failure rate. If you rely on humans to plan changes and you require on other, maybe more experienced humans to approve these changes, you're going to get human errors. So you may be getting more failed deployments than you would like. And finally, recovering, rolling back a stateful resource is very difficult. There is data there. You cannot simply delete the column because you're going to lose the data. So now you're going to need to figure out exactly what you do. You did something bad. Did anybody here successfully recover their database, their database from a backup recently? It's difficult. It's not fun. And so these things really impact dev experience in your company. And this is a true quote by said, said by no one ever. Now, InfoQ published, I think it was last year, this really interesting discussion about the difference and similarities between SRE and DevOps 
and platform engineering. And I think platform engineering as an emerging profession has one really, really cool thing about it. I mean, everything here is interesting, but there is one that's really interesting to me. I want to talk about it. And it's this one. It's a bit small. So, uh, and it's the, the expectation or the observation that good platform engineers are a little bit like product managers. They don't just build cool tech. They build the tech that is going to be cool for their developers to make working at your company suck less, to make it more efficient to do stuff. Okay? And so you need to have the mindset to look at these users and think about what's going to make them really, really effective. You know, um, okay. So we should adopt a product manager's mindset when we are thinking about developer tools, when we are thinking about development process. So let's do an exercise. One of the most common skills for PMs is user stories. Right? We put ourselves in the head of the user. We try to look at the world from their perspective and see what they care about now with regards to managing their database. So as a developer, I want to evolve my application without needing to think about the underlying schema changes because they require database expertise. I'm not a DBA. I don't know all this stuff about MySQL or Postgres, completely different things. I know the basics, but because this is a deep technical domain, it's scary, and I don't want to be afraid. I like building stuff. I don't want to be concerned about all of these risks. So I think that as platform engineers, or if we are DevOps people with a platform mindset, we should try to come up with a product that makes it really good for them. And what we are building in Ariga with uh, Atlas is something like this. So as you probably understand, I'm not an innocent bystander. I have some bias in this discussion. I'm not you know, uh, standing from the uh, sidelines and just you know, complaining about this game sucks. So I, in the past three years, I've been working with my company on, on Atlas. We open sourced the project in 21. It became pretty popular pretty fast. It uh, gained the name, we didn't intend to, but we, we adopted it, the, the, the Terraform for databases. So kind of a modern DevOps approach of this old problem. We have a very uh, vibrant community of people that are really engaged. We have almost 3,000 projects publicly using it in GitHub, but many more that are private repos. And what we tried to do with Atlas is to end-to-end -to, -end to build a, a, a platform of how to handle this problem that is just a basic fact of life when you're building systems. So as a developer, what do I need for schema changes not to be scary, not to be annoying, to just be something that is maybe even enjoyable as part of my life? So the first one, is automatic migration planning. I don't want the headache of figuring out what I want to do. Similar to Terraform, this is the desired state of my application. Can someone else with expertise please plan this for me? This is one. And we're going to show a quick demo of this in a moment. Once changes are ready, a pull request is due. I would really, really prefer if I get the feedback really quickly, if I don't need to wait for the database guild to have their big meeting and decide if my change is safe or not, I would prefer an automated tool to do this review for me. And the, I prefer if this tool was never tired, was never lazy, was never unconcentrated or preoccupied with other things. I would prefer if it was a piece of software that could do. Databases are complex, but it's not an infinitely complex problem. There are only so many changes that you can make. When I come to deploy, I, I don't want this to be this weird step that I need to manually do and run some script, or everything about my platform is 
GitOps self-reconciling infrastructure, and then I have this imperative script that somewhere I want it to feel like a native part of my infrastructure. And so how do I do that? And finally, as an operator, I want the visibility. I want to know what's the difference between different environments. If we forgot to upgrade some customers' deployment, I want to know about it. And I need the monitoring capability. So what we're building essentially is this end-to-end -end platform from development to operations of, of how to uh, do schema changes in a modern way. Now came the time for these guys. So please close your eyes in prayer with me to have the, the, God, the demo gods with us. So um, I have the code here for the failed deployment we showed in the beginning. Okay, now we're going to try the same thing that caused the outage, this time to do it ourselves. So I'm gonna make the change that our developer made. I'm going to add the was invited status to the list, okay? And you see here I have the migrations folder. This, for every change to the database, we create a new file. This is a classic approach. There are other approaches that Atlas supports, but I'm showing like the, the one thing that everybody knows. And it's these alter table statements. So I don't know if you remember how to, in MySQL, how to add a, 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 an option to your enum. I don't remember either. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let, sorry, zoom in so it's nicer for you guys. I'm gonna let Atlas plan the change for us. So Atlas has this command, migrate diff. Migrate diff looks at the migration directory. It replays it from start to end. It understands what's the current state of the database. It loads the schema directly from my ORM. So I have integrations for SQLize, for Django, for SQL Alchemy, for Java Hibernate, all of these plugins to read the desired state. I calculate the diff and then the result is this plan, okay? So this is the migration that is required to add the option to our enum. Now, we said that we want auto code review. So I'm going to commit this to, uh, to GitHub. and I'm going to create a pull request. In our developer platform, we use Atlas as kind of this static code analysis tool to check the migrations for us. So now I have a GitHub action. This GitHub action is going to replay these migrations on a, an empty database, and it's going to do this static code analysis to figure out if this migration is safe. In Atlas, we have over 30 policies for different databases, and they, you can, as a DevOps person, you can configure them to have the severity and sensitivity that you want. For example, in this project, it's currently evolving. We still need to run fast. We don't care about the data. It's okay to do destructive changes. But in this system, it's a production system. We really want the fine-grained control to allow or disallow certain types of changes. Okay, so you see we get a comment from a atlas and it says that one issue is found let's see what it is and zoom in a bit okay blocking enum change detected inserting enum values at the end of column status in the table requires a table copy okay in this case this is a configured to be a warning but if it uh, our database is mission critical. We can configure this warning to be critical, in which case the change that our developer did would not be able to merge it. Okay, let's fix it. Let's add the, sorry, doing it wrong, in the wrong place. I will change my desired state.
and add this here. I can update, I can delete my migration, or I'm just going to edit it here to save time. Atlas has a hashing mechanism to make sure that the directory integrity is maintained. Let's now push this out. And what is happening is that our GitHub action now will notice that a change has occurred. It will reanalyze the changes. This time, it's supposed to be completely green because the change is safe and does not have any, any specific risk. Okay. While this is running, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. After this uh, pull request is green, I'm going to merge it. And then, if the demo gods are with us, we'll show how we can deploy this change with Kubernetes. Okay, because we have for Atlas a Kubernetes operator that adds a, I will show it, adds a custom resource definition that's called an Atlas migration. Okay, and then I can specify the tag, the git tag of the version of the database that I want to exist in production, and this operator will notice this change, and then I will be able to deploy it. Okay, looks like our pull request is ready. No issues found. Let's push this. Now, we have a SaaS system called Atlas Cloud. You saw it, um, you saw it here. And one of the advantages of it is that it gives you this, once you push the migration to your master branch, it gets pushed to the schema registry, and we get this uh, automatic documentation. So unfortunately, guys here marked me that I'm, I'm at time. So if you want to see proof that we can do this with Kubernetes, you can come uh, to the Ariga booth. To wrap up, we discussed today that schema changes are a fact of life but they are risky and everybody hates it. As DevOps engineers, as platform engineers, it's our responsibility to make sure that it feels safe, it feels good, and it's efficient to build software in our, our organization. As part of it, I think you should really consider the tools you provide developers to manage database schema changes. Atlas is such a tool. There are other approaches, of course. And if you want to learn more, we have our website. We have our booth, so uh, please come talk to us. Thank you.